we're going to have an AI bubble. Well, let me just tell you what we see. Okay, so, so I, I think it's really important when you look at what's happening around the world and go back to first principles of what's happening in computer science and computing. There are three things that are, that's happening. The first thing is that we all know that Moore's Law has run its course and the ability, that the amount of demand for computing versus the amount of computation we can get out of general purpose computing is really challenging. And so the world's been moving to accelerated computing for some time, end of Moore's Law. The second thing is generative AI. What the, the, the most important application of the last 15 years is called Rexis, recommender systems. That Rexis is the engine of the internet today. That's going generative AI. Uh, yes, if, if civilization continues, which it probably will, uh, then AI in space is inevitable. Um, but the, in order to, the way to think of AI in space is that in order to achieve any meaningful percentage of a Kardashev 2 scale civilization, where you're using even a millionth, a millionth uh, of the sun's energy, you must have solar powered AI satellites in, in deep space. Um, so, so that once you realize, like, once you think in terms of a Kardashev two scale civilization, which is what, what percentage of the sun's energy are you turning into useful work, um, then, you, then it becomes obvious that space is overwhelmingly what matters. So, my, my estimate is that actually that, that, that the cost of, of electricity. Like, like the, the cost effectiveness of AI in space will be overwhelmingly better than AI on the ground. So far, lo long before you uh, exhaust potential energy sources on, on Earth, long, long before, meaning like I think even perhaps in the four or five year time frame, the lowest cost way to do AI compute will be with solar powered AI satellites. So. I'd say not more than five years from now. Wow.